Welcome to the BioWolf Bash scripting class. In this section, we will explain the basics of a Bash shell, what it is, and how it works. I will introduce a few concepts, but will not go into much detail. It is important for now to be aware of these concepts and understand roughly their meaning, as they are fundamental to understanding how the Bash shell works and what is happening on a Linux system. A Bash shell is an interface between you and the kernel. Another definition is the outermost layer around an operating system. A shell is defined by the following attributes. A shell level, a directory location, a set of defined variables, a set of processes, and a set of options for the shell. Let's go back and look at each of these features in greater detail. A shell is defined by a shell level, and that shell level starts at 1. When you first log into BioWolf, you are in shell level 1. For this video, I've modified my prompt to display the shell level in green, but normally the shell level can be displayed using a special variable $SHLVL. Let's get a little closer look. Type this command, ps dash dash forest. What you see is shell layering in action. When you first log in using SSH, the kernel creates a new bash shell for you with initial level 1. Running the ps command forks another shell, so the ps command runs in level 2. By the way, the verb fork in computer terms means creating an identical copy of something that is independent of the first. As you can see, we are in shell level 1. Starting a new shell increments the level, creating a child shell. Let's create a new subshell by typing the bash command. As you can see, we are in shell level 2. You can see this in more detail with the ps command. Now we're in shell level 2, and ps runs in shell level 3. Exiting a shell de decrements the level, destroys the subshell, abandons any running processes, and returns us to the parent shell. If we exit the shell by typing the exit command, we return to the parent shell. There are some subtleties to subshells and their exact levels. We will discuss this and various aspects of this in another video. Another feature of the bash shell is the directory location. The directory location for a shell initiates from the current working directory. When you first log into BioWolf, if all goes well, you will be located in your home directory, as seen with the pwd command. If we fork a subshell, you will by default remain in the same directory. If we change directories to a new location, and then exit the shell, you will go back to the location in which you forked the new subshell. The location can change, but exiting a shell reverts the location back to the previous location. That is, the shell remembers its last position. Another feature of the bash shell is a set of defined variables. We will explain variables in much greater detail later on, but for now, understand that a variable is a word that is assigned a value, and that ordinary variables are only defined within a single shell. If we create a variable within the shell, it will only be set or defined within that shell. For example, if we fork a subshell, get into shell level 2, and then create a variable, my var equals 10. That variable is defined within the shell, as shown with the echo command. Variables are not propagated to child shells or back to parent shells. If we fork another subshell, we are now in shell level 3, and my var is not defined here. 
If we exit that shell and go back to shell level 2, my var is still defined. And if we exit shell level 2 and go back to the parent shell, shell level 1, my var is not defined. Remember that if we exit a shell, this shell is destroyed along with the variables defined within it. If we were to create a new subshell of level 2, the variable we defined previously would not be set. There is a way that variables can be propagated, but this will be discussed further in another video. A very important feature of the shell is the set of processes that are running within it. When you run a command, the shell interprets the command and starts a process in a subshell. We've seen this before with the ps command. In this case, ps is running in its own subshell. Exiting the shell abandons running processes. If we start a subshell and start a process, then exit the shell, the process becomes an orphan. We can demonstrate this by first forking a subshell and run the sleep command, sleeping for a thousand seconds in the background by including an ampersand at the end of the command. If we run ps, we can see that sleep is attached or is a child shell of shell level 2. If we exit the shell, The sleep command is no longer attached to any shell. It's been abandoned or orphaned. The abandoned process may or may not continue running, depending on what the process requires. Again, there is much to explain here, but this will have to wait for another video. Lastly, a shell is configurable by setting miscellaneous options. Unlike ordinary variables, options for a shell will propagate to child shells, but not back to parent shells. There are many options, as displayed with the commands set and shopt, but this is beyond the scope of this video. We will discuss these in another video. In summary, a shell is defined by a level, a location, a set of variables, a set of processes, and options. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please email us at staff at hpc.nih.gov.